tonight. Get the f off my bed! No. What the f man? On World's Strictest Parents. Let's go. Get up. Come on. Put those shoes on and go with them, because you're not going back upstairs in that house. The rules were like, what the f Will military discipline straighten out these wayward teens? Get off the bed right now! Get up! When these tearaways go AWOL. If you got smokes, we're taking your smokes. You know. Yeah, we are. What are you, some kind of pervert? You want to look at my stuff? It will be the toughest week of their lives. Someone has got to get me the out of here. I'm not staying. Jack's a teenager who loves drugs, but his daily diet of illegal narcotics has nearly killed him. I've said to him, I'd hate to go and wake you up in the morning and find you dead. No matter what you say, it just doesn't seem to register with him that he's endangering himself. Well, I wake up at 2 o'clock every day, just smoke and drink and abuse drugs all day long. Now and again, I might take some pills or some speed or something like that. Sometimes I get off my head and I don't know what to do. He's had to be hospitalised on several occasions, but that's not his only problem. He also can't stop stealing. We shouldn't have to walk around our own place with our property strapped to us in case you get into it. Would you like to live like that? No. Well, why should we? We're always on edge with um, Jack because we can't, I can't leave my wallet in here. I can't leave my cigarettes or, or anything personal because he'll just take them. I stole my parents' cars and went on a binge of alcohol, marijuana, pills and speed. The 17-year-old was so out of control, his parents called the cops. I just burst out crying when I seen him, you know, come into the court. That's horrible. You don't think your own son is going to behave and act like this? What, you did affect it everybody, didn't it? Yes. Not just you? Yes. Mm. I was just gutted. I couldn't believe that he'd do that. The trust that he'd broken with us through that was just unrepairable to me. Now Jack's out on bail, but under house arrest. A 24-hour curfew and no drugs or alcohol are allowed. How much money's in my account then? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've got Mom, let me talk. He's going to end up in jail because he's just so headstrong. I'm not getting any income, but there's Thank money you. in my... Right, no! So you Oi! Not getting... Stop saying oi to me! Well, then let me talk! Yeah, I think at the stage that I'm at now, my parents have just had enough of me. For Jack's travelling partner, Carlene, it's always been her way or the highway, and there's no respect for her mother. Should we go shopping? Yeah, but... Who pays for all that? Mum's so kind and generous. If she's not a slapper into line. <gasps> I've, I've gone beyond the point of breaking point with her. Yeah, it's become quite normal now, the whole behaviour. I've just had to accept it because she's not, just not going to change. Yeah, well, what do you want me to say? Thank you sometimes. Thank you, Mum. No, when you should say it without me having to ask you to say thank you. You didn't even ask just then. What? Fuck you all, I'm a winner. She basically does anything and everything she wants and when she wants. She will go and be away all weekend. Um, I don't know where she is unless I've texted her. The worst thing I have been busted for is stealing my mum's car. Took it joy riding on their learner's licence or her learner licence and thought it was quite funny one day apparently I was actually walking down the street and they were in the car hiding on the opposite side of the road and I had no idea at all that they'd taken the car. If she wants something, generally 99% of the time she gets it, um, I pay for it. I don't know, well who else is going to pay? You're going to Texas. Ah shit. Fuck. All I could think about was cowboys and bulls. Fuck. Living with other people? Fucking how? I will not like it at all. I will. Oh, I don't even want. Oh, I don't even want to do this. 
I going to be shit at? Jack and Carlene are being sent to a small port town in the south of Texas, USA. Misty rain that clings to me Cause I'm a mean old son of a gun They'll have to try and fit in with a strict, disciplined military family where it's all about honour and respect. Success is a result of hard work and sweat equity, and so that's what they need to learn. It's a team effort, and if one person in the team doesn't make it happen, then they'll just have to sit outside. Laval Simons fought in Afghanistan for 10 years. He's from the elite squad of Green Berets. He's a sniper. His wife, Jennifer, is also ex-army. They have three kids, Mariah, Milam and Hannah. And they know the household rules and the consequences if they break them. My parents are very strict. My friends are afraid of them. If we don't do something, there's immediate repercussions. First, we take away the privacy. The doors come off. The phones come away. There's no internet. I've had my door taken away. My makeup, my jewelry. Uh, they're also going to have their toilet privileges take away. Uh, they can eat outside with the dogs, eat outside with the animals, uh, have a nice little table out there. They can even sleep out there on a cot at night. Um, I think the kids are really going to be shocked. I don't think they know what they're getting into. I don't think they realize how strict my dad and my mom really is. But while the teens are yet to experience Laval's confiscation tactics, their cell phones have already been taken away as they have to truly experience another family's way of life and face their fears. I'd just rather not pick up horse shit or cow shit for them. A little bit over it. I really just want to go home. Is that it? Oh my god, they're there. <laughs> they're right there. Shit. <laughs> Dad looks really creepy. <laughs> no, this is gonna be funny, Anne. This is gonna be crack ups. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Laval? Jack. Here you go. I'm, I'm Carlene. Carlene? Yeah. Carlene, nice Hi. to meet you. You kids wanna get your bags and we'll go in the house? Oh, yeah. Show you our places are. For one week, they'll be entrenched in the Simon's strict military ideals. OK, before we take you guys upstairs to your rooms and get you settled in, uh, we just want to go over the family rules. So starting off here, there's no smoking, no drugs, and no alcohol. Uh, there's no cursing while you're here. Uh, it's about respect. You need to have basic respect for other people. In my house, if you don't work, you don't help out the chores, you don't eat. Okay. If you still want to be, uh, you know, ornery and, and don't want to help out, uh, all your clothes go away except for one step. We take the doors off. Uh, then we'll go. We we'll take the next step. Uh, no bedding. And uh, then we'll finally we take away bathroom privileges. I got some toilet paper on the post outside, and we can go that far. Some of the rules were like, what the fuck? We wake up at zero six hundred every morning. We get up. Kids go to school. I don't know why he's so strict. It's a little bit of a change from at my house. Uh, do you have any questions? I have a statement. Sure, go ahead. Um, I will be smoking, I'm afraid. <laughs> You're gonna do what? I will be smoking. No, no you not. If you have smokes, we're taking your smokes. No, you know. Yeah, we are. No, you know. If you don't. If you don't want to be here, then you can go ahead and get back in the car. Go back to town, get on a plane, and go back home. You know? Uh, if that's the way you want, want to play the game, that's fine with me. I don't care. Wayward teens Carleen and Jack have arrived in Port Lavaca, Texas to live under the Simons family military style rules. And already there's a battle brewing. I would all be smoking, I'm afraid. No? I ain't if you, don't want to, if you don't want to be here, then you can go ahead and get back in the car, go back to town, get on a plane, and go back home. The only habit that I have left is smoking, and I don't want to give that up for anyone, so... And, like, no one's going to be like, you have to go out smoking to me because it's my choice if I want to smoke or not. It came down to being a standoff, and he decided he would rather leave than go home. 
we're used to kids trying to push their limits, then we just push back. I just don't think you should leave. Don't leave me here. <laughs> Do not leave me here. <laughs> Why don't you just give me the cigarettes? I'll put them down my top or something. I'm telling them straight up. I'm not going to be dishonest to them. I'm like, I'm a smoker, and yes, I'm going to smoke. I'm not going to lie to them and be like, no, I'm not going to smoke here and all this stuff, and then actually just sneak in and go have cigarettes. Because that's just going to give me a shit, and then I have to shit in the backyard and stuff. I just thought it was utterly fucking stupid that someone would leave an opportunity of a lifetime, and it will be a lifetime, because I don't see him ever coming back. You got you clean off drugs. Yeah. You can pick out, clean off this one as well. All for a pack of cigarettes. I just think it's fucking stupid. But it's not Carlene's persuasive words that change Jack's mind. He's realised that if he's sent packing early, that will mean breaking his bail conditions back home. I'm just going to get in even more trouble when I get back to New Zealand if I don't give it a shot. So I might as well give it a shot. You guys are still here. I thought you were leaving. Oh, nah. I want to try not smoking for the rest of the time I'm here. I just want to go have one year. last cigarette. Do you mind if I just go down to the road and just have one last Smoke cigarette? Smoke it up. Thank you for being so kind. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be really tough for me not to smoke this week. I smoke a lot of cigarettes and I don't think I'm going to cope that well without them, really. When I don't have cigarettes, you know, I just might just start punching the wall and swearing loudly and just getting angry, pretty much. For Carlene, though, it's a different story. I think it's going to be a breeze. I don't know if I'm stupid to think that or not, but I think it will go well. OK, um, this is your bed, and you have that drawer or the closet, which I didn't want. I don't think there's much to play it with, except for the whole swearing thing. I guess it just depends on what we want to do and what we don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that they're going to try us in other ways over the next couple of days to see if we're still going to stick to the other rules. For me, it's going to be a, sh you know, a short week. For them, it might be a very long week. It's the weekend, so it's a sleep in until 7. And when everyone rises, it seems the dramas have subsided. Or have they? You all ready for the activities for the day? I'm not really excited to see the pig being killed. You're not excited to see it being killed? I'm all right with it being killed, just not seeing it. Like, oh. It's going to be awful. But do you shoot it? Yeah. Shoot it? Yeah, he'll probably stab it to bleed it. Colleen thinks it's not right to kill animals and all that, but she's just got to realise that it's just everyday life. People that live on ranches and farms that they raise cattle and they kill them to eat for themselves. I reckon she'll take off actually. So it'll be very funny. All right, boys. Got already. Yep. I have heard a pig being stabbed once and I just don't like it since then. I just didn't want to hear it, so. I was trying to block my ears as much as I could. I just wouldn't kill it if it was my pig. Pull it down. Take him all the way. There you go. Now you're talking, man. Oh, good job. That's good. Now, yeah, good job. Good job, buddy. Good stick. Good stick. I think Jack did real well. You know, he jumped right in there, stuck the pig, helped out, and then uh, everything went smoothly. Carlene got stuck in too once the pig was dead. But slaughtering dinner is just chore number one for the day. There's plenty more to come. Today we've had to do some chores. And if, if we have to do more tomorrow, then I don't know how I'll take it. I'll just get sick of it, I think, or fed up. But today was an easy day with the chores. We didn't really do much. If it was during the summer, we probably would have built a fence or the yard or something like that. Build a fence? Or yes, build a fence. Yeah. That's not it's a long day. I thought that they shouldn't really have to do as many chores as I think they do do. Yeah. I think maybe the parents should take on most of them. So why don't you do chores at home? My mum does them. She's just everything, basically. 
I thought it was a bit ridiculous that Carlene didn't do any chores at all. I mean, she lives with her mom. Her mom helps, you know, she pays for her food and all that, but she doesn't do anything in return. So what do you do if you don't do chores? Go to school and just come home and do whatever I want, basically. Like if I want to watch TV, TV or, yeah. You got with friends and... Just whatever I want to do, I can do. I figured she at least wash the dishes or... And she doesn't even clean her room. I figured she at least do something. It's a new day, and Carlene's astonishment at the amount of chores here has not gone unnoticed by Laval. What's the, the driving force behind living in a different environment with some other folks? At the start, I thought it was for change, like a massive shock for us. But then I guess now, like being here, it's not that hard. So I think it's just to respect what we have back home more. To value more what you mm. have at home? Because maybe we don't respect it. Well, I don't. I know I don't. Because I take full advantage of not having to do anything and stuff like that. So maybe just respecting what we have more by seeing another life, I guess. What is it about your mother you don't respect? I guess I have no respect for her because I know I don't have to do anything and I'll get away with anything and stuff like that. You know you're taking advantage of your mother sometimes doing that, you know, and that, that mother-daughter oh, yeah. relationship. And so I know that. It, it, and I guess the key is that you try to stop doing that and build a better relationship on that end to help your mother just because you love your mother. If you learn one single thing that will help you with the mother-daughter relationship, then you've achieved something. Yeah. So is that it? Does it make any sense to you? Yeah. While Laval feels positive from the chat, he suddenly has a suspicion that Carlene's been communicating with her mum, and that's against the rules. How'd you talk to your mom last night? I don't know. You got a phone. Why don't you just hand it over to me? No, because it's my only way to contact my mom. You're not supposed to be contacting your mom. Yeah, but... That was part of the deal. You got a phone, hand it over, come on. No, I don't want to. Could you, you're not being honest about it. I don't want to hand it over. I already handed one over. Don't make me go through all your stuff. I don't, don't want you to go through all my stuff. Don't make me do that. You I see, don't you're think forcing it's me to. either, though. You will if I take every bit of your clothing, except what you've got on. If I take everything you've got and strip that room down, don't make me do that. You're, you're putting me in a bad situation. You know, relationships are built on trust, and now everybody knows that they can't trust you to do anything that you what you say you're going to do. Is that how you're going to base your decision on all your relationships? Is nobody to know that nobody can trust you because what you say is not going to be the truth? I know I've been truthful when I've been here. I brought a phone. They never asked me, hey, where's your second phone at? I gave them they the didn't phone. Have, they, you, can, you can sit there and, and dice it however you want, but the bottom line is they asked you to turn all your stuff to them. And you refused, and you didn't. You lied about it. No, my fault. You guys didn't find it. Actually, no, you're not. Yeah, well, it's really not your stuff, so don't touch it. Actually, I am. It's not your stuff. Y it doesn't matter. You're here under yeah, my it's house. Not. Yeah, well, I'll fucking you're leave here in then. My house. Don't touch my shit. I'm on it. Yeah, it's not yours, though. Don't care. You give up the phone. I ain't giving up the phone. Okay. That's just it. You just not take my stuff. Carlene's supposed to have been totally immersed in her new way of life, but she's been hiding a second phone and talking to her mother back home. Actually, no, you're not. Yeah, well, it's really not your stuff, actually, so don't touch it. Actually, I am. It's not your stuff. Y it doesn't matter. You're here under yeah, my house. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, well, I'll fucking you're leave here in my house. Don't touch my shit. I'm on it. Yeah, it's not yours, though. Don't care. You give up the phone. I ain't giving up the phone. Okay. That's just it. Then we're taking your you stuff. You just not take my stuff. Yeah, don't. What are you going to do, hit me? No. You going to hit me? What are you going to do, hit me? No, Give I don't need to. Give my fucking things back. No. They're not yours. Doesn't matter. Well, I'm not fucking staying anywhere, so give my shit back. Afraid not. It's not yours to take. Afraid not. Yeah, it's not yours to take. I'm taking it. 
It's fucking not yours to take, so get the fuck off my bags and give me back my shit. No, gosh, does this have a phone in it? No, so fuck off. Get off my bag. No. Get off my bag. No. Get the fuck off my bag. No. What the fuck, man? No. What are you, some kind of pervert? You want to look at my fucking stuff? Nope. Get I'm off my fucking my wife bag. Is. I'm not doing this show no more. This is fake as fuck and you're an asshole. Get off my bag. No. Just get off. No. It's not your stuff. Oh, well. Well, get the fuck you off it then. Oh, fuck's sake. I don't give a fuck. Get off it. Wow, there's a the phone. Oh, so fucking what? You ain't touching that shit. I got the phone. Give me the fuck out of here. I'm not staying. It has been a sleepless night in the Simons household, as everyone thought Carleen was going to run away. We live in a very rural area, and if she would get on the highway, there are a lot of drug smugglers out there, uh, body snatchers, you might say, that would uh, pick her up and you'd never see her again. So it's a good idea Carleen decided to stick around. But now the question is, will she head off to Calhoun High today? I wanted to go to school to get out of the house and away from everyone, particularly Laval. I didn't even want to just be here. So the more time we spent away from here, the better. It didn't look like a school from the outside. It looked like an institution, really. It just didn't seem like a nice place to go to. But Laval's concerned Carlene may still make a break for it. So there's a lesson in Texas school rules. One of our rules is no exposed tattoos and no exposed piercings. So I don't see any piercing, but I will need for you to cover the tattoo on your wrist, please, sir. We also have what's called a closed campus. That means that you cannot just come and go from this campus when you feel like it. If you leave the campus without permission, that's considered truancy. We also have a curfew in Port Lavaca. So if you will be picked up by the police and brought to school and you will be cited for a curfew violation. All right, I don't know if it's time to go, but let's go. It seems school is a better place than jail, which is good news for Jack, who's loving life. Ooh, that's good. You can make progress. I really was happy about going to school today. I was having so much fun. This was just the fact that I've never been to an American school before, and I just really wanted to see what it was like, and I was just really out there and really, really ready to give it a go. But the fun is cut short. The school has learned of Carleen's argument over her phone last night, and both are sent packing, as the principal thinks the teens will be too disruptive. Well, she's missing out on a lot of things, and it's not her missing out. Like, now I miss out too. Like, we miss out on school now, and that was really cool. Back home, while Jack's hard at work, his other half's taking it easy. Kelly's behaviour's been pretty selfish, arrogant, immature. And it was just like, you know, I used to be like that, and I guess it sort of made me grow up even more from just seeing it. Can you just help us do some work? So you want to change clothes and come help us? Why would I want to help you? So you're not going to help me. Why would I? You're not going to do anything. Last chance. Why would I? Last chance. I don't see the point in helping you. After yesterday, I don't, I don't see the point. You have no desire being part of the team, being part of the family, none of that. You just, yeah, you're on your the own. the rest, but just not you. Right. You were caught lying and got your phone taken away, which was, was you're not, you're not, you weren't trustworthy. You should never so have touched to my stuff chance. like that. Last chance. I'll okay. help if someone else asks. Okay. I think I am pretty strong-willed, yes. I had the phone just because when I did want to talk to someone, it was just there for me to use. So 
I wouldn't not be able to talk to anyone or have those restrictions. Laval's already secured the food and taken away Carlene's clothes. She attempted to bully me around and kind of scare me off, maybe the way she's done somebody else. But uh, that wasn't going to work in this uh, little war game scenario. But there are other consequences if you don't help out. Get up out of bed. Let's go. Get up go. out of bed. Get out. Get up. 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 When you lie, break the rules, and refuse to help out in this household, there are consequences. And Carlene has been warned. It's get time to do get drills. Get out. out. Get Come up. on, get up. Get up. Get up. What's get up. You're a boot camp now. Get, get up. up. Get up. Get, get your ass up right now. Get your ass off the bed right now. Get off the bed. Get off the bed right now. Get up. Get up. Get up. You're a boot camp. Get up. Let's go. Get up. 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 We'll see how much of a joke it is when you get outside. Think we can come here and be disrespectful to people? Be disrespectful to your mom? Open the door. You want to be disrespectful? Why do you want to be disrespectful to people? What did you I think do? it's funny? You think it's funny? What Have you I disrespected do? Mr. Simons? Disrespect yeah, your parents? Took, I, I had the punishment. He took all my clothes, and I'm not allowed to eat. Why are you being disrespectful to people, though? No reason. He was disrespectful all. to me, so I'm disrespectful. I doubt it. I doubt that Mr. Simon was disrespectful to you. I've known him for a very long time. He is not a disrespectful man. You got a choice: you either put those shoes on and go with them, because you're not going back upstairs in that house. You can sleep on that porch if you want. I'll sleep if on the porch then. If you want to go down the road, then the cops will put you up and put the clinks on you and take you to county jail. I'm not going to do this, and I'll sleep on the porch. It's just fine. We've moved into our final phase here, and we've kicked her out on the porch and put her outside, and she can stay out there with the, with the dogs and have fun with them, maybe, for 24 hours. Jack, on the other hand, is looking for career advice and inspiration. Quite a few years now, I've been quite a big druggie, mm -hmm. taking drugs for quite a while now, drinking, just abusing my health. I fucked up big time. One of the punishments I have to do is LSV. You know, boot camp. Pretty much. Basically. And um, after that, I want to join the army and get my life on track. You know what? And I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that about the drugs because I was just like you. And I made the same decisions as you. I chose drugs and I got into some big trouble with the law. And I had to go to court as well. So I joined the military and I signed up for four years initially. And it really straightened me out. I took a lot from the talk, especially what that lady said, like, her story pretty much is exactly the same as mine, exactly what I've been doing for my life. So it hit pretty close. <laughs> we'll go show you some cool stuff and kind of give you a, a little bit of an exercise regime that you can take home and start practicing. And But hey, I'm really proud of you. It's really, really honorable in what you're doing. Okay. I'm acting like this now because I'm over the shit that I used to do and I'm just trying to move on with my life. This is the person I want to be for the rest of my life. I'm trying to actually change my entire life. I want to live like this now. I don't want to be a little anymore. Front! Look up, there you go. There you go, back! Front! There you go, sit up, sit up. And when you see something that you're having problems with, like sit ups, I can already tell, that's what you need to work more on. Keep going, go. There you go, do it. There you go. Do come whatever on. you get have up. to do, wiggle your way up. Come on, pull yourself up. Come on, come on, let's go. Get up, 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 get up. Come on, try it again. Let's go. Get up. Come on. Come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Get up. Okay. Keep trying. Get up. Run. Go. Physical exercise I done today was pretty full on and intense, but I enjoyed it a lot. One, two, three. Come on. One. Already, I just feel so much better about myself. Three. Got a lot of teacher. I can go anywhere I want, do anything I want. Just gotta stay out of trouble and do the right thing. Even though Jack's seeing a brighter future, there is still reinforcement needed, and he has received a letter from home. Dear Jack, we love you and are missing you. From an early age, you have showed yourself to be a very strong-willed person. This in itself is not a bad thing. However, when that strong will turns to arrogance, to the point of ignorance and obnoxiousness, then it is an unacceptable attitude. At most times, you appeared to have no regard for our feelings or property, and you have broken our hearts on many occasions. Trust, loyalty, caring, 
honesty, respect, responsibility. These birds are all very strong and we have felt let down by you with all of them. You're on this journey because we love you and always will. Please learn from this experience and make yourself proud. All our love, Mum, Dad and Vic. You know, I felt embarrassed about all the things I've done over the last couple of years of my actions and ashamed of what I've done and how this has affected their lives. I think my parents are going to be really proud of me of all the changes I've made and the fact that I'm joining the army and all that. I think they're getting a bit of pride back for me. Carleen's also had a turnaround, but there may be other motives behind it. I do want an apology for yesterday as well. I think it was 50-50, so. So you're thinking when I was sitting there on your suitcase and you're sitting there shoving me and cursing at me and calling me a pervert and all those other names, that that was, who was escalating what? When I was up there to get your phone, which you weren't supposed to have. Yeah, I know. And I am sorry for that, I guess. And, I don't want to sleep in here tonight. I decided to apologise to make it easier for me to be here. And for it to go quicker and then get out of here. OK, I'll accept your apology if you're going to okay. help me out. Yep. OK. I would have to say I'm probably counting down the hours and minutes for Carlene to leave. Uh, this house. She's been very disruptive, uh, not a good team player. It's all about her and not about what uh, we need to do as a whole. And so unless she was going to stay here for another six months, I think it would take that amount of time for something to sink in. It's a new day and it's a fresh start. And for once, the Simons place is not at war. You know, this morning was a whole lot easier. The whole day has been easier today. Uh, there's no tension in the air. She's out there willing. She's trying to help. She's not complaining. She goes right to the task when we ask her to do it. So let's hope this lasts for the remainder of her stay. And the reward for hard work is learning what Laval's most skilled at. OK, guys, today we're going to go over the Glock 9mm pistol. It's a semi-automatic pistol. Oh, it's pretty cool, you know. We don't really get to shoot guns like this in New Zealand. I shot just rifles before, pretty much. Nothing, nothing like this. Ready? Fire. And on you. Yeah, one more round. Do that again. Do what you got to do to hit the target for now. Then you'll, you'll work on your, your other skills. Okay? Push, push out, push out. There you go. I don't think that even went in. They did. Do you remember the bullseye? Oh, OK. I knew Carlene could shoot. I didn't know she was that great a shot. I mean, she was putting one round in after another. Well, I did all right. You know, I think at one stage during her stay here, she probably would have liked to have had that gun so she could, uh, you know, pop a couple rounds my way to get my attention the way I was trying to get hers. After doing so well, Carlene's decided to join in and become part of the team. I think that this trip was meant to be an eye-opener and a, a shock to us, and it has been, yeah. I think when we go back, a lot of things will change, and I think one of the major things would be helping out and being a lot nicer towards my mum. But Laval and Jennifer doubt Carlene's really learnt anything. Maybe after the experience of this week, one last, one last hour, one last day, we'll have an opportunity to talk about how she really is inside and how people view her 
and even though she don't see her way herself that way, others are seeing her that way, and that's going to hurt her in the future. So now, instead of Carleen reading her mother's letter in private, Jennifer's decided to sit down with her. But Carleen doesn't want to read the letter out loud. Hey, your mom sent a letter. I knew that was the letter. I knew it. Can I not? No one's seen it, so. Um, if you want to go ahead and, and read it. You want to read it silently okay, first yeah, and then I'll, out loud? Oh, I can't even do this. No, I, I'm per, um, proofreading it. Just reading it through. Oh, oh. Jennifer's asked Carleen to read her mother's letter out loud, but she's finding the task tough. Can I not? No one's seen it, so. You gonna read it silently okay, first yeah, and then I'll, out loud? I'll read oh, I can't even do this. Dear Carleen, while you've been away, I hope it has given you a chance to reflect on the way you've behaved over the past few years and how good you've had it here with us. You are not a bad kid at all, far from it. You are very talented and an outgrown person. I had no boundaries in place, so when situations arose, there was no real punishment. But in saying that, you need to take full responsibility for your actions and stop blaming others when things go wrong. Love, Mum. Do you understand the consequences and why boundaries are... Like your mom said, she didn't really have yeah, boundaries in place. she doesn't. She said... Do you miss that? Do you do you wish that maybe she did have more boundaries to, to give you guidelines in what to do and what not to do? Oh, yeah, I wish she had pushed me further in definitely schooling and sport. So when you go back, do you, do you think you'll sit down with your mom and explain to her that you understand how hard it is, but that you would want her to give you boundaries? You know, I guess... Curfews, like you have to be in at a certain time or... No drinking. Oh, I definitely wouldn't want any of them. You wouldn't want those boundaries? I don't think I'd want curfew at all. She's really not willing to change. She doesn't want to change. She enjoys being able to do what she wants when she wants. And if it's convenient for her, then maybe she'll help her mom. I don't know, maybe if she stayed a little bit longer, um, maybe she would let down that wall that she has up and um, be a better person when she left. But time is up for the teens. I don't regret what happened because if that didn't happen, then it wouldn't have been such a turnaround for me, I don't think. I've amazed myself a lot, not just the fact that I've had a cigarette, but the fact that I haven't actually stuffed up or done anything like really wrong over like the last week. I'm pretty proud of myself in that way. It is, it's a good feeling to have that feeling of success with a child, even if it's just one thing that they changed in their life to better themselves, that, that's worth the whole week. Jack, it's good to meet you, young man. Good to meet you, too. I hope you learned something and go out there and kick some ass in the Army. Yeah. All right? Bye, Bye Jennifer. Carly. It was nice meeting you, and Same remember what you. I said, okay? Yeah. I'd like to tell Carlene's mother that the best thing you can do for your daughter is tell her no. She can't run over you. She can't do everything she wants. It, she's living in your house under your rules now, and that's the way it has to be. Thank you. For Carleen's mum, she's had to face up to the fact some of her daughter's behaviour is her fault. I realised with Carleen having had that second phone that she was breaking the rules. Well, it wasn't a big rule to break, it was a little rule. <laughs> and yeah, and she's my baby, and if that's what I had to do, that's what I had to do. What I hope that she'll get out of it is that she realises that, um, that she's got an awesome family who love her heaps, and that, yeah, she starts to mature and put things that have happened in her life behind her and start to grow and develop and set some really good goals in her life. You're in big trouble for sending me on that show. <laughs> nah, not even a hug. <laughs> You're in big trouble.
Come big on. trouble for sending me on that shit. Come on. Now you have to take my bag up the thing. No, I'm not. What did that? Don't try and act like you're not doing shit for me now. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Do you think I enjoyed it? I don't know. Fuck off. I wanted to get out of there. They wouldn't let me go. You know how I texted you? Yeah. Yeah, and, and then... I figured they found the phone. Because well, you're not allowed over there. Yeah, but it was day. fucked up. I was just like, holy fuck, get me the fuck out of here. It was like prison and shit. Oh. And your letter was shit, man. Here we go. That was nice. It was too. What it was, was too. It? Then it was like, fuck, you're a bad kid, blah, blah. Does that I what it said like... in the letter, that you were a bad kid? No, I was no. just like, what the fuck, man? No, it said in there that you weren't a bad kid, but that you have to face your own responsibilities. I learnt what I should act like. I learnt what I treat my mum like and what I should be like and what I should change and stuff like that. Are you glad you're home then? Yeah, fucking it was terrible. I am going to be more appreciative of everything I have. For Jack, world's strictest parents had been his last chance with his family, who had lost all trust in him. I don't really know what my parents are going to think when I come back. They'll probably think I'm exactly the same as I was before I left and all that. So I pretty much just have to go back and show them that I'm a changed person. Hey. The girl that we were with, you know, she, she got a bit naughty, so they had to call in the boot camp for her. Yeah. And, like, I had the arm with them. They were just telling me about their army experiences and all that. They were like, oh, do you want us to show you something? Did yeah, you not do the boot camp thing? I didn't have to. I was a good boy. Oh. Really? I didn't break the rules. Yeah? He didn't. No. I was a bit apprehensive for a start of it. Um, seeing him come in and, and listening to him, um, seems like he's maybe turned the corner, hopefully. And, um... Yeah, you seemed appreciative of, of what's been done for him anyway. Yeah, we, yeah. we wrote your letter. Yeah, I read it. I've got it in my bag. Yeah. yeah. How'd you go with that? I don't know. It was just sort of. And then I didn't really want to get all emotional on the old camera. <laughs> <laughs> it was emotional writing that. Yeah. Because, you know, that respect and loyalty. I've forgotten the other ones, yeah. <laughs> Honesty, trust, responsibility. Good oh, work. That's yeah. good. Yeah. It's up to him. We've we've really done all we can do. And it's just a wait and see. But I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Takes us like the cargo on the <laughs> south <laughs> of America. <laughs> south of America. I reckon this is a new beginning for me and I reckon I have changed. So hopefully it will be best and hopefully I make it in the army and whatnot and get off my life. Yeah, it's a pretty good feeling that I've done really well. You know, quite proud of myself. Feels good.